Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today's fountain pen is the third in a series of what I've been calling cheap, crappy name brand pens. They are inexpensive, yes, but they are anything but crappy. And they are name brands. The last two were from Platinum. I'll link those reviews in the description below. But today's cheap, crappy name brand pen is the Pilot Explorer. There's absolutely nothing crappy about any of Pilot's fountain pen offerings, although I haven't tried out the Plumix yet. I'm not sure I could handle the prestige of that cap, though. This Pilot Explorer might just be the pen to knock the Pilot Metropolitan off its perch as the favorite first fountain pen. And in honor of its name, the Explorer, I'm going to explore its features and its possible point of origin. Relate your point of origin. We are from the United Federation of Planets. Insufficient response. All things have a point of origin. Fascinating. So come and explore this explorer with me, right now. Okay, here we are with the Pilot Explorer. It comes in this gray box with the Pilot logo. And it's very similar to this gray box with the Pilot logo, which is a Metropolitan. But this has no designation on it. But it comes in the same kind of box as the Metro came in. A little flip top, see-through, with one Pilot cartridge in black. And here's the pen. Nice little box. And at first glance, it is very light. A nice matte black clip. Get my magnet out. And you can see that the clip is metal. I think that's the only thing on this pen that's actually metal. I like this gray color, but it comes in a number of different colors. It's a pop top. And here we see the typical number five pilot nib. This one is a medium and a different section, however, from the Metropolitan, which I really like. There's no step up here. So we're going to be doing some comparisons with the pilot as we go. We'll ink this up and we'll come back and take a look at it. So in addition to getting the Pilot Explorer, I went back to my store and picked up a Con70 converter because I read that the Explorer will accept the Con70 over the Con40 and the Metropolitan doesn't accept the Con 70, so I thought I'd give that a try in this pen. But for the purposes of the review, I plugged in a Pilot Blue ink cartridge that uh, I've got a box of. I use the empty cartridges for my E95S. So now that I've inked this pen up and written with it for about a week now, let's take a good look at it under our cool appraising stare. When did you last embarrass a Sheila with your cool appraising stare? You've been all over that sort of chat, aren't you? What I noticed first about the Explorer is how it feels in the hand. It's very light. And the smooth, almost metallic finish is very pleasing. If it wasn't for the feel of this material, this pen would just feel cheap. But this doesn't feel cheap. As a viewer pointed out, I don't know shit about plastics. What I do know is that there are a lot of materials we generically call plastic. What I also know, just by touch, is when a pen feels cheap, because it is cheap plastic. I know when a plastic, like a turned acrylic, feels luxurious in the hand, and substantial, like this Pen BBS 308, just the feel of it, the barrel of this Platinum Prefonte, for example. It uh, looks like plastic, and it feels like plastic. And it's got all the markings 
gates and lines and seams and things like that that let you know that it's plastic. It's not unattractive, but this feels like a bit of an upgrade over that. And this is certainly better than that. I may not know plastic, but I know what I like. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> so the Explorer is a material that's somewhere in between. It isn't light, cheap plastic like the Prevante, but it isn't turned acrylic either. When we open the barrel in a moment, we'll see the true color of the material. From the top, we see a black plastic finial. The cap tapers up slightly. And there's two beveled holes in the sides that reveal the black matte plastic of the finial. One side has the Pilot logo and the word Pilot embossed in it. The other doesn't. The clip is made of the same black matte material, but as I showed in the unboxing, this is metal, not plastic. It is uh, nicely springy, and it's actually very attractive. Nice, elegant design. The end of the cap bevels down to the barrel with three steps, and then the barrel is straight, so about here where it tapers down to another black plastic finial, which matches the one on the top. The cap snaps off to reveal a semi-translucent, smoky gray tapered concave section, which ends in a small flare and a number five size pilot nib. Let's take a closer look at it here and compare it with the Metropolitan. You can see that they're probably the same shape and size. In fact, they're exactly the same shape and size. And the feeds look identical. Plastic. But the Metro has some hash marks on the front of the nib and says Pilot, an M in brackets for medium, and Japan. And then a 417. Whereas this nib says Pilot, super quality Japan, and the M for medium in brackets. This is where I start to think about the birthplace of this Pilot Explorer. When you compare it to the Metro, the Metro has some of these hash marks and just the Pilot, and the Explorer has Pilot Super Quality Japan. Where have we seen this Pilot nib before, this one? Ink inquiring minds want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. I want to know. Well, we see it on the Pilot 78G, don't we? The Pilot 78G is a pen that Pilot has manufactured in China for the Chinese market. Now, the Explorer was released as part of Pilot's 100th anniversary celebration, but it kind of slipped under the radar anyway. It was initially priced higher than the Metropolitan, which makes no sense at all, but is now settled down to be roughly $5 cheaper than the Metro. But this lower price point, the use of super quality and no markings at all that say made in Japan on the pen or the packaging, plus no included documentation in the packaging like these pamphlets that you get with the, the Metropolitan, even though the packaging down to the, the case that it comes in is almost identical. All of this leads me to believe that this pen is manufactured in China. I have no proof, just a hunch. Why put super quality on that nib? Everyone knows the quality of the Japanese Pilot nibs. The only other places I've seen super quality other than on the 78G is on Wing Sung Chinese nibs. It only matters when we consider the pens from Japan to be superior to the cheap crap coming from China. Back to the pen. This section. This section is super quality comfortable when you compare it directly with the Metropolitan. There is no ugly, sharp, and uncomfortable step down from the barrel to the grip section on the Explorer. Although this section tapers too much, in my opinion, and becomes a little too thin right there, the lack of any step from the section to the barrel makes it easier to find a grip that works, at least in my hand anyway. And when it comes down to it, probably the main reason I prefer the Explorer over the Metro 
is that lack of the step that makes the Metro unusable for me. But there are more reasons. Just stay tuned. The cap posts deeply and securely. It makes the Explorer a little longer than the Metro, but this cap is so extremely light. It doesn't backweight the pen at all like the Metro cap does. The inside of the cap has an inner sleeve, which is nice. It'll help keep the nib from drying out. The barrel unscrews to reveal a section that takes a standard pilot cartridge or the aforementioned CON70 converter, which works like a little piston. And this converter also, which is nice, takes the same amount of ink as the cartridge. The cartridge takes one milliliter full and the converter uh, when you fill it if you get it full I haven't tried it yet uh, will take one millimeter one milliliter of ink as well the Metro will take the uh, regular pilot cartridges of course and a con 40 uh, which takes a half a milliliter of ink and has those horrid little balls in it this is universally disliked this converter and well deserved too. I refill the Pilot standard cartridges on my E95S which I love this pen. I use it almost every day uh, but this pen also takes the CON40 converter which I actually bought for this pen thinking it was going to be advantageous but as you can see here, when you put the CON40, you can't see the ink level when you unscrew the barrel in the E95. So it makes that pretty useless. And so it goes so far up inside that body. At least I can see the ink level uh, through a cartridge. And I get one milliliter of ink. But for the Explorer, I thought the CON70 made a lot of sense. You get a large ink supply and the ability to use your bottle inks, which saves on the cost of the cartridge ink. The cartridges, when you cost it out, are hugely expensive. And with Pilot, the cartridges come in blue and black and other really boring colors. I was also going to try out these mixable Pilot inks. They say they are only for the Pilot parallel pens, but that's just for the mixing part of it. You put two nibs together, the two parallel nibs, one with one color and one with another color, and you put the nibs together, the resulting line will have a gradient from one ink color to the other. I thought it would be cool to see the colors of the mixable pack and see if they resemble any of the Orochizuku inks from Pilot. They come in these, these many colors. I had complained to my pen lady that Pilot should put some Hiroshizuku inks into cartridges instead of these boring colors. She handed me this pack as an answer. So we shall see. Inquiring minds want to know. And once we have the barrel open, we can see the inside is white. And so the, the pen is sprayed with this metallic paint, and only part of it goes to the inside. Again, I don't know what plastic this is, but it sure looks and feels like polystyrene or polyester resin. Although there are no metal parts on the section or the body of this pen, I would hesitate to eyedropper this pen due to the unknown nature of that plastic plug back here on the end finial, how that uh, attaches there and how waterproof or leak-proof that is, I do not know and I don't want to find out. There we go. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Okay, here is the Pilot Explorer with a Pilot Metropolitan, a Platinum Prefonte, a Platinum Plaisir, and a Lamy Safari. Now let's look at them posted. So here they are posted, and you can see the 
Explorer is every bit as long as the Safari. But what's interesting is even though the Metro posts a little bit deeper and is a little bit shorter, the Plaisir sort of comes in as the, as the champ here for compact. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Pilot Explorer. It is a medium steel nib. And the ink today is Pilot Cartridge Blue. Let's check the wetness. It is decently wet, actually. And like the Metro, it's a surprisingly thin line for a medium. I was a bit surprised at that, and then I inked up the Metro and found that it is exactly the same. It's more like a fine. And as to line variation, well, there is a light line. There is some pressure. The tines actually flex a little bit, unlike the, the platinum nibs, which don't flex or separate at all. This one actually flexes a little bit, but it's a steel nib and you're not going to get any variation. And you wouldn't expect any anyway. That being said, it isn't as stiff as the Platinum P-Series or the, for that matter, the Pen BBS steel nibs. So a fairly boring line with a pretty boring ink. I mean, that's look at that blue, it's pretty dull. Come on, Pilot. Don't you make a Rojazuku? I mean, I mean, sheesh. Look at this. It's blue. You know what? Let's put some better ink in this pen. See if we can goose it up a notch. Oh, crap, Canadian goose. Look out, eh? It will give us a chance to try out this cool Con 70 converter that costs more than this pen. So please stand by. return control of your television set to you. And while I've got the pen apart, I thought it would be a good opportunity to show you how it works. The pilot style nib and feed just pulls out, but the nib has a really cool feature uh, with the feed in that, in that it's notched here and it just fits in one place and doesn't move. So it actually aligns the nib and the feed perfectly. And then you just slide it into the section and pulling the nib out. Sometimes it needs a little bit of an elastic or a rubber grip. And check that it's back in correctly. And there you go. Very, very quick and easy. Now we put the Con 70 converter in there. And we're ready to ink up the pen. So I've decided and I'm going to use Robert Oster Fire and Ice. I haven't had an opportunity to use this ink yet, and I've been excited to try it. Dip the entire section in the ink. Push it down, I get bubbles. And with every successive push, I should get more ink, as you can see. Wipe off the section. Be very careful here. I know you'd love for me to have an accident here, but you may get great ratings. But it'll take a long time to clean up. There we go. Actually makes the pen feel a little bit heavier as well, which is not a bad thing. 
I'm going to let the ink drain down there and we'll continue with our writing sample. And here we are back with the writing sample. Before we go any further, let's take a look at the swatch for the ink I've put in. This is Robert Oster Fire and Ice. And next to Eroshizuku Kon Peki. And Hero D Sky Blue. You see the Oster is a bit more green than these two turquoise inks. And let's check the wetness again. With our new color. I like that much better. But I'm a turquoise fan. So let's listen to the pen write. So there's a good amount of feedback with this nib. You probably couldn't hear it, but there is a, it's not scratchy, it's uh, not not smooth, but it uh, you can feel the nib on the paper as you write. Some people like that, some people don't. Uh, this is very, very different than the Platinum Plaisir or the Platinum Preppy, or the Platinum uh, Profonte, uh, which were all, of course, the same nib, but uh, very glassy. And that nib was a lot thicker and a lot uh, wetter than this uh, Pilot nib is, which is much thinner and much drier by comparison. And to some reverse writing, It runs dry very, very quickly. And some quick writing. I forget how to write my name sometimes. Sign, please. What do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, let's start with the likes, of course. I like the material. It is light, but it does not feel like cheap plastic. I like the metallic sheen of whatever this paint is they use to paint over this resin. I like the range of colors that are available for this model of pen. I'll show them here. I really like that it'll accept that CON70 converter and therefore you can use your own range of inks uh, instead of this boring blue cartridge. But the CON70 adds a little bit of heft to this pen which makes it feel actually a little bit better actually. He said actually again many actually times. You might actually like him. Oh might I actually Susan. Well isn't that actually actually nice. Well, sod you. And what do I not like about this pen? Well, I don't really like the way the nib writes. It's too thin for a medium. If you really want to use this pen and need a thicker line, I'd suggest getting a Pilot Plumix medium metallic nib and swapping. It's an easy swap, as I showed you. It's too bad because I really like this pen with the capacity of the Con 70. I thought it would be a real good knockabout pen for me. I'll have to find some kind of a stub in the Pilot style to swap with this one, or maybe one of those Pilot Plumix when they come on sale. Because right now they're almost as expensive as some of these pens. Is this the Metropolitan Killer I thought it might be? But Dave was there. Dave's the killer! Yeah! Yeah! He's the killer! He's a mess. I seriously doubt it. If it wrote as smooth and wet as the Platinum Plaisir, um, yeah, I'd say yeah. 
But at this point, I have to say the winner, in my opinion, which is filtered through my own patented objective analysis. The best pen of the series, bang for your buck, cheap, crappy, name brand fountain pen of this shootout is the Platinum Plaisir. Your mileage may vary. Your mileage may vary. And there you have it, the Pilot Non-Metro Explorer. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.